Hello everyone. Good afternoon. I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you and thank you for taking time to see schedules. Before we start, I would like to inform you that this session is being recorded. Let me once again welcome you all to this insightful session on redesign problem management, a systematic approach to root cause analysis from Symphony Summit AI. I would like to let you know that we have taken all the necessary precautions to make sure your experience during this session is smooth and flawless. However, in case we come across any technical difficulties, kindly bear with us since most of us are operating out of the home network. As the session progress, I would urge all the participants to post your questions in the Q&A box, which will be answered by our host towards the end of the session. And the agenda for the webinar would include Introduction to Symphony Summit AI by Mr. Raja Shekharan, Director, Marketing, Symphony Summit AI. This will be followed by a 45 minutes deep dive in session by Mr. Rishi, Associate Director, Symphony Summit AI. We will follow this up with a 10 minute session for a Q&A. Now I would like to welcome Mr. Raja Shekharan to start the session. Over to you, sir. Hey, thanks, Anu. Anu, if you can make me a host. Yes, sir. Yes, I have the access. Thanks, Anu. Just confirm if you can see my screen. Yes, it is visible. Thanks, Anu. Uh, thanks, everyone, for taking time out to join today's session. Believe me, just before the webinar and or for any important meeting, working from home has been a challenge in the kind of an arrangement one had to really make, make sure that you're okay, making the kids silent and making sure that okay, you know, your surrounding is uh, noiseless and the other thing, it, it's always a challenging, okay? But we are getting used to it. We, I would rather say that we got used to it. You might be wondering that, okay, what is the background uh, behind me? And it says that IT devices. Um, uh, Bit of digression from the agenda, but uh, it's important that okay, it's it's a right platform to sort of really talk about it. Symphony Summit AI has launched this initiative recently. Uh, let me explain this, but let me illustrate this with a recent event. Um, so this is during the recent cyclone uh, for one of the financial leading financial services company um, in India and. Uh, for their data center, which is located in the suburban of Mumbai, had a major outage. And this happened recently, and this happened on, say, Friday night, midnight. And the IT support team discovered this particular issue and then had to sort of really immediately have to act because there were many critical uh, that's business applications were there in that particular server. So they've actually, the network engineer and all the technical engineer had to go to the data center to sort of really fix the issue. And <clears throat> with the support of the help desk team remotely sort of really supporting the team on it. They worked on for about six hours. See, that's from Friday midnight to sort of really Saturday early morning and fix that issue. All the people had to sort of really leave their Friday evening and the other thing, and they had to just rush to the data center and then fix the issue. And also the person who was supporting it from the help desk, um, the most was a pregnant woman, and she just got everything and she just really made sure that okay, the business continued the goes on. So she went extra mile and so does the other engineers and the other things. So they went that extra mile to really make sure that uh, they fix the issue and they make sure that okay, the business continuity stayed on in the organization. So this IT Hero Rises is an initiative which we launched uh, recently to recognize, acknowledge the passion and the commitment of the IT support team. They go beyond their call of duty to sort of really make sure that fix the issue and make sure that okay, you know, they keep the customers happy and they make sure that okay, the business continuity in the organization is never interrupted. And this initiative is essentially to sort of really support and acknowledge the team. But we have many stories which are featured on idheroices.com. So you can just go and check yourself on this URL, idheroices.com. There are many stories, very interesting stories, you know, of your videos. Uh, please go 
www.mrsindhiidhiherorices.com and also make sure that uh, you also nominate your team members of okay, your team you okay, know anybody who you want to really acknowledge it it's a very simple process you have to just nominate it and then we will take care of the rest of the things very interesting story a very interesting initiative and we are getting a lot of feedback and uh, very encouraging support from the cios and the uh, the enterprises in the market so we would request you to be part of this initiative by visiting and just reading and sharing it and also nominating your team members for this initiative now moving on um yeah as tanu mentioned that okay so we have a very interesting uh, solution demo session which is planned before that i, I will i'm going to take about say like 7 8 minutes to sort of really cover upon some of the summit ai corporate slides i'm not very sure that okay how many of you know summit ai well so the slide probably would give you background to know about that you know where does summit ai stand in today's market um, i'll make this pretty fast uh, if you look at it symphony summit ai is a leading artificial intelligence driven it and enterprise service management suite with modules like it service management it asset management Cindy, which is our AI powered digital agent and service automation all of that integrated at the code level under one suite and we've been the recipient of Gartner Peer Insights Customer's Choice for last three years in a row. And we've been featured in the IDC markets, market scale as a major player. Uh, also, we have been the preferred choice of the CIOs for many large enterprises and the other organizations. And we've been the recipient of the CIO Choice Awards for the last four years in a row in the IT management, IT service management category. Early this year, Economic Times has featured Summit AI as the best tech brands. We are largely part of Symphony AI Group. Uh, it's a uh, Symphony AI Group has set up $1 billion of investment to incubate and nurture ideas and solutions built around artificial intelligence. Uh, and the Symphony AI Group companies focus on, focuses on building the uh, AI-centric solutions, which can cater across various industries and the other things. So we are a portfolio company of Symphony AI. We've grown to 250 plus customers in the last few years. These are some of our reference customers. If you really look at it, from the leading consulting players like KPMG, Deloitte, EY, to uh, most of the, you know, the large um, enterprises companies are our customers. Summit AI has been disrupting the IT management space. It's becoming a fast emerging player in this space. We started our operations from India, and today we have customers across the globe, right from North America, South America to Europe, Japan, Southeast Asia, Australia, and the others. Uh, we are growing slow and steady, and then across all the regions. Uh, this is about a slide sort of really talks about that, how Summit AI is sort of really, um, <clears throat> so how Summit AI is positioned compared to some of the leading players in the market. Uh, Gartner Peer Insights is a user review platform. I'm sure that most of you would be knowing about it. This is where, okay, the CIOs and IT decision makers like you go and rate the product based on your personal experience as a person who purchased the tool, implemented it, used it, and the other thing. So on all the key parameters, if you really look at it, these are the key parameters any IT decision makers will factor in before they decide investing on an IT service management tool or an IT asset management tool. So across all these parameters, Summit AI has got far better higher ratings compared to the other enterprise players. Uh, so, so we sort of really compete with some of these large players and across all these players, Summit AI has got a higher rating and better rating. And this is available on public domain. You can go ahead and check this yourself. And um, as mentioned that uh, Summit AI has leadership in many of the verticals which we really operate with and so most of the uh, the leading telecom companies are customers of Summit AI. If you look at the financial services space, there are 35 plus uh, BFSI companies from India are the Summit customers. 
so does for the healthcare consumer automobile if you like if you take automobile from toyota to maruti bajaj auto royal enfield volvo asher honda motors all of these are consolidated customers moving on to that uh, so what's the what are the customer promises of summit ai i would classify that under four buckets one is delivering exceptional employee experience leveraging our next generation ai powered multi tenant tool self service features like self service omni channel engagement and the other things okay you know we make sure that we deliver exceptional employee experience then up to 30% improvement in cs time up to 50% faster resolution of service requests and leveraging cp which is a ai powered uh, digital agent so we are able to resolve the issues far better and uh, so across all the customers which we work with we have seen a pattern that we have been able to improve their csat score at least by 30% so that's becomes our customer promise we will be able to improve your csat score at least by 30% then faster time to value up to 50% faster implementation time and um, we've seen that with the many vendors uh, where we heard from the market and the customers that they had to wait for years to really get the value of the investment which they made in their ideas and tool so here we will be able to deliver much faster value uh, and uh, our implementation time is much shorter you can take the product live within 90 days and you pay only when you really start using it and we really recognize the partnership with the customers we demonstrate to partnership our terms are very customer centric simple terms we are very agile in the responses always available very easy to do business with it otherwise we wouldn't have been featured in the gartner peer insights report for the last 3 years in a row some of the key value drivers the differentiators of summit ai are you will be experiencing this during the demo uh, of rishi who will be doing this now uh, so we are a next generation ai powered multi tenant scalable platform we are an integrated suite okay so where you get uh, it's an integrated suite with it service management enterprise service management IT asset management and AI powered digital agent and service automation all integrated at the code level, and the features like service automation can enable up to fifty percent faster resolution and the auto resolution of your service request. And we are a low code, low code technology. That means that very easy to implement. You are able to take it live faster. Very easy to use and very easy to administer, and packed with. very smart and interesting features which we will be demonstrating it like business rules operational intelligence gamification and the others and we provide omni channel experience leveraging web mobile and uh, ai powered digital agent and very easy to integrate with any other tools and any other enterprise tools which you have in the organization and of course very powerful user friendly dashboards which provides better insights and uh, it knows that okay you know what is the status of the performance across the team and across the geography and the other things which you can even integrate with your bi reports of uh, bi tool in the organizations so again we will be demonstrating that so with this i'm going to invite rishi to to the demo of it and before that tanu can we run a poll let's run the poll and then we will invite rishi to Uh, to the demonstration sure thank you rajesh ekran for the insightful session so we are starting up the poll hello everyone here comes our first polling question so i request everyone to take part in this i can read out the question for you are you looking for any of the following solutions in the next 6 to 12 months you can you have a choice to select multiple choice the options are it service management enterprise service management it asset management or none of the above
I quickly repeat the question again. Are you looking for any of the following solutions in the next six to 12 months? The options are IT service management, enterprise service management, IT assess management, and none of the above. Awesome. We have received 75% of the people have participated. Thank you so much. Now I would request Mr. Rishi to take over. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm just getting control to share, right? Okay. So as we speak about, uh, hope my screen is visible and I'm audibly here, right, uh, Tanushri? Yes, Rishi, you are. Yeah, thank you. So problem management, right? Primarily, we know that uh, problem management is an ideal process, right? So many of you are aware of what is problem management, which we do on a day-to-day -day encounter in our official work, right? Uh, from an ideal standpoint, how does uh, primarily, what are the key aspects or what are the key activities that a problem management includes? So as you can see, primarily recording and managing, first is primarily, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, <coughs> if not all, most of the customers would have some kind of a recording mechanism in terms of capturing the event, either from an uh, user, or from an event that is triggered from your monitoring tool, right? So based on that, how do you analyze the data? And then primarily identify uh, the root causes, what are primarily causing it, whether it is network, whether it is platform, or the firmware, or an application, or an OS, right, or the database is causing this issue. And then based on which to address these kind of issues, how do you immediately create some workarounds, right? What is an immediate solution that can be offered? And based on which, what can be the long-term solution to ensure that these kind of events does not occur so that you can arrest this repetitive nature of the problem, right? So based on which, right, why should we implement problem management, right? So this gives primary an aspect to ensure that, right, you can have preventing service disruptions, which means to say that you don't have to primarily work on repetitive incidents that are happening across your organization, right, primarily related to IT. And then ensuring that you don't get, service. because of the service disruption, you can maintain your service level. So once you arrest the service depression, uh, service disruptions, you can maintain your service levels. And then you can also ensure that the availability of the services are up to the time. And ensure that your uh, analysts or technicians who are working on the incident do not have to spend their work or their efforts in solving the repetitive incidents, for example, in one of the location, you get an output issue, another location, you get an output issue. There would be two people who would be primarily handling this issues in their own manner and they'll be providing their resolution, right? So you don't have to spend uh, primarily this uh, kind of effort if you have problem management in place. So by increasing the efficiency and productivity, and of course, the end result is primarily improving the user satisfaction. So these are the key areas right that you should focus primarily on why should uh, we implement problem management and understand these activities and based on this uh, thing you would be able to i'll be able to present how summit as an an uh, enterprise service management tool would help you deliver this seamlessly whereby you don't have to re reinvent the ideal problem management process where you primarily have uh, all the standard best practices for handling problem management Right, in a systematic way, out of the box, right? You don't have to really spend time to even reinvent the problem management, right? So what are the typical steps that are involved in a problem management? Of course, the problem management record is created. How is it created, right? It can be through incidents that are primarily creating, that are being uh, happening in your network and based on which the incidents are recorded in a <clears throat> ticketing tool. And based on that, you can derive those inputs and are probably the events that are triggering from your monitoring events, right? Something like the monitoring solutions that you might have. So your data center infrastructure is triggering an event based on which you can have a problem record. And then based on this problem record, once it is created, it generally goes through a validation process. Whether is it a rightly qualified problem record? So uh, typically can I authorize this? So is there primarily a known error database that is being, should be linked to 
and based on which you progress and authorize to create to do a root cause analysis right uh, the primary <clears throat> function of problem management is to understand the root cause analysis and this root cause analysis is just not by documenting right uh, through a screen based or a form based entry but you can uh, summit helps you to deploy or employ a uh, uh, root cause analysis technique right like five y analysis or uh, your fishbone analysis kind of techniques that can be applied right which is primarily out of the box and based on which you can analyze that and identify uh, uh, the key area or key uh, originator of this particular issue and based on which you can have an approval mechanism which is validated by the uh, smes or the uh, functional experts that are there and based on the rca findings it might primarily lead to implementation of the root cause analysis and what it has identified what is the solution that it provides and based on which you go and implement it so while resolving the pr there can be automatic primarily associating with the change management process for example the root cause analysis might come out with a finding saying that uh, the issue has happened because the resource availability on the server for the application is not uh, uh, enough you might have to increase probably the ram or the hard disk or the processing capacity which is primarily a downtime requirement because in upgrading the processor or probably an upgrading the firmware or the application patch right will lead to downtime so that can be systematically handled through the change management process by taking going through a necessary evaluation of implementing the change and then identifying what can be the risk mitigate the risk and after this you go out in terms of doing a validation through a cab approval identify and debate these uh, uh, changes right what kind of impact it will have then identify and go ahead and implement the change right and this based on this you also will lead to adding this particular solution resolution item to the knowledge management so whenever primarily an uh, engineer encounters a similar problem he can quickly refer this knowledge article or the known error database and provide the first level of response that is required to arrest the incident that has been happening from right so these are the prime areas or prime uh, ways uh, workflow that uh, primarily we can adopt right in summit also right you can go primarily you can also have your own level of workflows that can be handled for handling problem management so this is what we are going to see primarily in our uh, demo session that we are going to have so this is primarily the familiar dashboard that uh, you would uh, primarily would have seen right uh, in summit right in a couple of webinars that we have discussed this uh, people have been repeated participants to these webinars this is primarily the area where an analyst will have a demographic view of his ticket that is presented to him and start focusing and working on the tickets that are there right so he will be able to see the problem record right that are in his work group and what kind of status that they are in what are the uh, problem records that are assigned to him and go ahead in terms of handling this particular problem record from here right so let us see how a problem record is created from an incident there are multiple ways through which this can be done one is primarily if there are multiple incidents that are happening in a repetitive manner in a course of time right based on which the system will be able to auto identify and then create a problem record on its own but beyond this there are also scenarios there might be a possibility that a major incident has occurred though primarily you have all the metrics to monitor the incident there might be an uh, untriggered event unplanned event that would have occurred right so which will be a major incident which is causing a major downtime where the users are not able to access the application or probably connect to the network or probably they are not able to do work which becomes a major incident during which technicians will be able to quickly identify that and create a major incident so this major incident primarily will ensure that you can create a war room right whenever you create a war room what happens is you can collaboratively bring in the stakeholders right based on the uh, configurations that are done right you can bring in the necessary team into the uh a uh, war room and they can be notified because their information their respective stakeholders 
who handles problems or critical issue or a particular issue or an application issue or a server issue or a network issue or a firewall issue are available in the database and based on which you can bring in those uh, uh, stakeholders and immediately using Microsoft Teams, you can set up a war room or probably a Twilio, which is primarily a voice over uh, chat, right? And uh, which is voice over IP, which where you can set up a bridge and the system can dial out to the respective stakeholders and bring them to this bridge for discussing the critical event that has occurred. And primarily coming into the area of, or if the stakeholders feel that primarily this requires further analysis, so that the event does not occur. The analyst can decide, or the technician who is handling this uh, uh, major incident can decide from here to create a problem record from here, right? Using this, they can start ahead and go ahead in terms of doing the root cause analysis in a systemic way to ensure that all the uh, aspects of handling this to address uh, the corrective action and preventive action, which is called the CAPA measure, can be done using the problem record, right? So once the problem record is identified, you have a complete view of this problem record and you can define or identify what sort of problem records I need to pick and start working on it. So you get a complete view in a tabular column. Of course, the tile view is also there in terms of various statuses and what kind of RCA methodology was employed here. So this is something you will be able to primarily do. And based on which, as you can see, there are a few RCAs approved. Let us understand what are the key uh, elements that uh, will be able to have in a problem record. So one is primarily the source is already decided, where it is primarily the trigger is from an incident management, where from an incident, this uh, problem record has been created. And based on which, what was the description and system is available and based on which the analyst can decide what kind of impact an urgency is, whether is it a reactive problem record or a proactive. Proactive is primarily when you the system analyzes using the problem record configuration that is available in terms of auto creation setting, right? Whereby you will be able to primarily see the problem record auto created based on incident trends, right? Using incident trends, you can be able to create the problem record from here. You can create these settings based on the condition. What are primarily the trigger points and what is the condition to fulfill the auto problem record creation? Whether the priority should be P1 or P3, P2, what kind of category should it consider for auto problem record creation? So what should be primarily the uh, incidents that are there? number of incidents that have occurred in the last say defined number of days, it can be custom defined, either if you want to track it for 10 days or a week or in a 30 days time, and minimum number of incidents that should be matching, though it will monitor all the incidents that has occurred, what should be the minimum number of incidents based on which? These are the conditions that you can set for a, a effective problem management, right, to ensure arresting the uh, primarily repetitive occurrence of this incident. Right? You can create this condition and based on this condition, you can define who should be the target, who would be handling it and which is the team that should be handling it and accordingly prioritize impact and urgency can be defined for which typically an auto problem record is created. Right? So based on which you can have this criteria incident or impact and urgency can be created. And based on the matrix, whether the uh, depending on the impact and the urgency, the priority matrix is also set. And based on uh, primarily what type of risk it poses, whether it is a major risk or it's a short-term risk that you can identify. You can also define the work group and you can also decide if it is a critical problem, you can also define SLA matrix. Generally, most problem management techniques does not support RK because there might be time variance that might be involved. But you can define these time variants based on the realistic scenarios, which will help to address uh, timely responses of the root cause analysis. You can also tag the RCA deadline and when is the resolution deadline, and based on which you will be able to capture what are the workarounds that are required, and the analyst will be able to flag whether it needs to be added to a knowledge base record. And based on the knowledge base record, you can decide what category 
it should be involved in right so you can ensure that the null uh, error database is updated to this particular problem record right so once this is identified right it goes through an authorizer a workflow that can be there and based on which you can have the approval mechanism set right so as this is a particular problem which has been already approved by the authorizer and it has come to the rca owner right which can be designated to a particular person or a team and based on which they can do a rca analysis so here you can define what caused the problem right you can capture all the what kind of methodology that has been used i told you that there are two types of methodologies that are there one is stone analysis and five by analysis and what are those uh, uh, challenges that you have encountered which can be captured and based on which you can have a relatively fishbone diagram right which is primarily the problem matrix where here it has been identified simply that there is a process issue that caused this particular problem so they analyzed hardware they analyzed the hardware uh, issues right so none of this uh, caused the problem but however one of the general factors which is primarily the process which caused this particular set of issues and based on which you can set up a remediation plan right and based on which what kind of communication you want to send out to a set of users or to the user who is primarily highlighted this and then you can also capture primarily what are the necessary cost factors that are involved right what kind of costs are involved whether there is a requirement to procure some hardware or probably procure some services that are required to address this particular problem you can capture that and based on which what are the diagnostic steps that are performed on each activity so when we say root cause analysis here when we identified assess <coughs> excuse me hardware operating hardware operating system in general right on each of this process you can capture the diagnostic process that are involved right so based on which you can capture what kind of diagnostic activity what was the result and any kind of screenshots or additional information that you primarily had done and you can also set up a problem review based on which what is the planned review date and who are the problem reviewer that are there and based on which you can set up who are the assigned responsibility who is the rca reviewer and when is the review date in addition to that it also maintains complete referenceable data including what are the configuration items that are involved in this particular problem what are the incidents that were uh, associated to this particular problem record what were the referenceable knowledge records that were included here so both ways primarily from an incident you will be able to refer a problem record and a problem record you can also associate the incident and change it here right or probably from here the root cause analysis revealed that it requires the uh, configuration change in the core system from here you will be able to create a change record which will read to the change management process which will be will be in the subsequent webinars that is going to come up right so this is primarily how you primarily do uh, uh, problem management and you can capture the adequate information most of the financial and uh, 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 pharma sector where it is a regulated uh, uh, industry you might want to provide a proof of the uh, root cause analysis that has been done as part of the iso practices or probably compliance practices you can go ahead in terms of exporting this particular information and present it to the necessary auditors for them to review what kind of activities what kind of control measures have been taken when there is a kind of uh, major it can be related to uh, application or it might be related to an information that got leaked out right so these are primary scenarios where the problem management is uh, vital and what kind of uh, risk factors uh, that has been encountered what kind of corrective action that we have that system has been taken and what is the preventive action that you have done so these are well documented in the entire problem management uh, uh, area and that can be presented as a pdf document right so this is something that is available of course all the communication history and audit trails are available so which is a very very mandated in a root cause analysis scenario right so this is one of the methods that uh, we have seen and similarly the uh, problem record can be done for fishbone analysis using uh, five y analysis right so similarly you can also identify right 
you can do a fishbone analysis using the root cause. And then you can also look at uh, primarily the 5 y analysis. So these are the 5Y analysis where you can capture why this problem occurred. You can keep on putting 5Y analysis, nothing but you can put across as many questions that is required for analyzing why this problem occurred, right? When you say you identify, you got an answer to the why, you can also put up another question to the answer that has been provided based on which you can have five levels of why or more than that to analyze your uh, problem. And based on which you can also define your remediation action, right? If there are five whys uh, uh, that are unanswered, you can primarily go into handling who, what is primarily the cost, who is primarily the action owner, and what is primarily the target completion date, what kind of remediation plan that is the respective person is involved, right? So this primarily gives you a complete uh, a data about the problem analysis technique based on which you will be able to do the corrective action and preventive action. Right? So this is primarily how you primarily manage uh, uh, the problem management. And of course, beyond this, right? these are primarily a rec recommended practices, not a mandated practices. These are how best practices or ITL process tells you how about you should be going the problem management area. And based on which, if at all, there is any organization specific information that you would like to collect right, can be captured here, right? Whether which is includes uh, specialized information about what are the technical uh, workarounds that are there, any communication notes that has to be sent out, right? The corrective action, preventive action, which I spoke about can be captured here, right? So any such additional information can be captured as part of the custom information requirement that you have, right? So this is something you will be able to and from here to primarily to ensure that the problem management area is uh, uh, the root cause analysis that you have done is implemented using this relationship tab, you generally go about creating a change record from here, right? So what happens is primarily you create a change record and immediately as you see, the relationship of the problem record is already referred here. We picked up here and primarily the change practices or change management process will primarily come in. So here, based on which you can go ahead in terms of implementing the change requirements that are required, probably assessing in terms of questions that are there based on the tenant uh, that even, which is primarily, uh, Summit is always has been a multi-tenant platform based on which you will be able to select the tenant and identify the owner or group. And once the owner group is identified, you can have the change practice, whether it is a small change, medium change, you can do it. So this is primarily the entire cycle of how a problem a record, you use a root cause analysis and identify what cost and what is the corrective action that you are going to do. And primarily, how do you ensure that in future it does not occur by primarily necessity changing any of the core infrastructure components or application or processes that are there. You can do it using the change management process, right? You can identify changes as normal, standard, or emergency change. As part of the change management process, primarily normal change would be the first uh, change that you will have to implement. Or probably if this is primarily the root cause has identified as this is primarily a regular patching of the system will ensure that uh, the, these kind of problems will not occur. You can start this as a normal change, after which you can move it as a recurring change or a pre-approved change. Right. So for every time when a pre-approved change is already there, you don't have to go through the fully uh, required change management process of cab approval, authorization, validation, risk analysis, and other things. Probably if it's a regular patch update or a firmware update that you are going to do your to your any of your core system or core applications, you can always make them as pre-approved change or standard change where it does not have to have go through the process. Once this is identified. You can also put across various questions to the change implementer. 
right? So you can take it as a pre-approved thing and go about in terms of going ahead in terms of implementing this change using this process. And also, you can also do a business risk assessment. You can also put up the questions in terms of what kind of risk is processes if this change is implemented. You can put a, a, a question and based on the answers, you can have a metric. If the uh, a user chooses for, uh, statement A as a response or response A as is the primary response, you can put a score as five. And if you put, uh, put the response as E, you can put it as maximum. So based on the assessment of this risk, business risk, you can also have operational risk that you have encountered, right? And this can be different for each and every uh, change type, right? This can change based on the category and uh, primarily based on the change type. You can have these questions uh, accordingly coming up based on which you can also complete the problem management process by implementing this change process into the system so that you can arrest your problem and change record, right? So that's where I would like to stop, right? Uh, if there is any questions, I can take it up or probably if there are questions that are there, we will take it up for some issue. Right? Marishi, thank you. Thank you for the insightful session. So we do have questions. So I'm stopping my share. Sure. Thank you. We have a question from Chandrasekhar. Is it possible to get a trial access to this problem management dashboard portal? Yes, they definitely can rest uh, the thing. So they can contact, write a short mail in the contact that we are going to uh, bring up uh, after the session is ending, before the session is ending. So you can make a request uh, or you can come to our web portal and uh, primarily make this request. We can make that arrangement. Thank you for taking that question. And we also have a, a message from Pradeepta Kumar. We are evaluating ITSM. You can reach to me for further discussion is what is I think. Sure, uh, sure Pradeep, we will get back to you on that. So we have two more questions from Kale. Does your platform has NLU deep learning capability? When you say service automation, what tool you are using and what kind of scripts are supported? Yeah, so this is not relevant uh, primarily. This is primarily uh, from an uh, AI driven platform. We primarily use the uh, Microsoft Tui's uh, platform. And we, yes, we do have uh, deep learning capabilities also. Using our data, we help customers with uh, providing a data scientist and other things to read the data and accordingly primarily provide that particular support. And uh, we have our own orchestration platform. Right, which is primarily uh, that can be provided along with the platform, and uh, it supports uh, it supports uh, batch file, command scripts, Perl scripts, Python scripts, shell scripts. So it supports all the standard uh, scripting uh, languages uh, that are required to support, right? Including VB script also we support. Our next question is from Mr. Gautam. Is the tool available on cloud or on premises? Yes, it is available uh, both from cloud as well as on premise. Depending on your data privacy compliance requirements, uh, we can provide uh, uh, the hosting option both uh, in uh, cloud as well as customer's premise. Okay, we also have one more question from Mr. David. What kind of root cause analysis technical is, is used? We primarily use, as I explained, uh, 5Y analysis and uh, fishbone analysis as the key uh, techniques uh, for the problem management. Uh, we have one more question from Mr. Shashi. Can the tool perform a trend analysis? Yes, it does uh, uh, provide a trend analysis. Since the data is available, Either as an incident or a problem record, you can definitely do a trend analysis also. Okay. And, and, you, you, and you can also do your uh, create your own configuration for the trend analysis uh, uh, report. Hope you got answer for your question, Mr. Shashi. The last question what we have at this moment is: Are you able to analyze recurring and duplicate tickets? 
Yes, we definitely do. One of the key aspects of uh, problem management is the doing that. Yes, uh, we definitely do that. So we do an analysis of the incident trend. As I told you, one is primarily based on the number of incidents that have occurred in a particular period of time and based on whether it has happened in a particular category of ticket, whether it is a network layer or probably application or at a server level. We do that trend analysis based on which we identify and we also keep track of the duplicate tickets that are happening. If there is multiple tickets in a single category that is happening, we can identify that as a P1 ticket and accordingly initiate the problem management process or the remediation process as is deemed necessary by the organization. So we have one more question from Chandra Shekhar. Also, is this portal uh, custom customizable for other portfolio like Team Six Sigma and project management? This is primarily created from an ITSM standpoint, right? Uh, primarily, you can uh, primarily. I'm not able to get the context of this question. Probably, we will definitely connect offline uh, primarily to get uh, more clarity on this question and accordingly answer it. Uh, okay. Uh, we have a question from Deepika HR. Can this problem management access enable for all analysts? or it is based on license? Yes, problem management is a specialized uh, area where typically it is not given to uh, L0, L1 engineer. Generally, it is given to uh, specialized people who would primarily uh, require to handle the problem management uh, module, right? So we have, uh, based on licenses, yes, it is there. We support uh, uh, a professional edition. The professional edition primarily can support uh, problem management uh, access. Analysis. Thank you, Rishi, for taking up all the questions. And thank you, attendees, for asking such a valuable questions. And if we don't have any more questions, maybe we can conclude it. Uh, uh, Raj, uh, hi, Raj. We have one more question from Gaurav. Is asking, do we have the child and parent relationship? Yeah, that is definitely available. So that is primarily part of any uh, incident management process. That's uh, uh, primarily a technique that you, where if there are uh, more number of incidents uh, in a particular category, you can group them as parent child, so you don't have to work on all the incidents. You can work only on the parent incident based on which uh, you will be able to primarily uh, uh, link those tickets and create a parent child relationship. That's the default uh, feature for any incident management process. Thank you, Mr. Rishi and Mr. Rajesh Shekharan for the insightful session. Kindly. If you have any further question, I would request you to please post your queries to a, to a response email ID that is AI summit at the rate gpj.com. I repeat, it's AI summit at the rate gpj.com. Uh, looks like there are no more. Okay, we have one more from Vijay Gopala Krishnan. Once you hand over IT asset management, do you support us or it's free of support? We have uh, any licenses that is procured uh, primarily comes with a support option. So once the asset management uh, is uh, implemented, uh, we generally hand over it over to support, which is primarily based on our support portal. They can reach out for any support. So there is a defined SLA metrics that are there based on the priorities. And there is a dedicated team uh, uh, which will primarily can work and uh, respond uh, to the queries that are raised uh, by the support. Thank you, Rishi. Yeah. Okay, looks like there are no more questions and we'll wrap up the session. Yeah. I would like to thank each one of you for taking time out for the session today. We will be sharing the recording of this session via email with all of you. We wish you a great day ahead. Stay safe and take care of yourself. Thank you once again. Thank you.